So I recently just hit a pre-tax net worth of $100,000 as a 16 year old kid. To put a long story short, I was slightly obsessive. I got a bit lucky and I put the hours in and if you want more info, then stick around because I'm gonna be giving you the full journey right now. All I ask in return is if you consider liking and or subscribing, that's it. Now enjoy the video. So I'm going to start here because I feel like it's important that I give some context on how I got into the space of making money and why I even wanted to become an entrepreneur in the first place. So from a young age, I've always seemed to gravitate towards doing something creative, whether that be filming something, making a game online. And as I grew to be the ages of maybe eight, nine, ten, there was only one thing that I ever really wanted to do being a YouTuber. I started my first channel in late 2017. It was your average run of the mill, 10 year old trying to do Minecraft gaming, let's play videos. I posted about 58 videos in the space of about half a year, but a few years passed, nothing much happened. But on my 12th birthday, all of this changed. It was about mid 2016 at this point, and you could see from the videos I was posting, there was a considerable increase in effort put into them. It was around this same time that my YouTube channel got monetized, meaning that I could make money from the pre-roll ads that would be displayed at the beginning, middle and end of my videos. And almost a year later in June 2017, thanks to, you know, slightly clickbait in the fidget spinner trends, we got our first bit of money. We hit the withdrawal threshold at $60 and that was the first money I had ever made online. At the time, you know, something like that feels like the world. It was the proof of concept like, whoa. I can actually make money from doing this. Time passed and not much changed, but in summer of 2018, the story starts to take a shift. This is around the time where I really wanted to make some money. I realized that a lot of these kind of get rich schemes and these people trying to sell you courses on YouTube, all of those kind of frail in comparison to just the classic provide value and make money from that. I looked at what skills I possess myself and almost instantly I realized, oh, I should go and edit for people. The first thing I did is I went to the freelancing websites such as Fiverr.com, Upwork and PeoplePerHour.com. I made an account on all of these websites and I was basically just putting half an hour every day just trying to find clients. And I kid you not when I say it took me over one month one month to get my first $10 order. It was a guy on Fiverr asking me to edit somebody's video for a birthday gift. In five hours of work, I earned $8, but I got a five-star review out of it. And doing that was one of the most valuable things I have probably ever done. Months went by and although I had a five star review, I got no more sales on any of the platforms. So I decided to go back to the drawing board and I decided to reformat my gigs, my profile and look at competitors, see what they were doing and editing it accordingly. A day after updating my profile, I got another order, this time for $30. It was a quick compilation of some wedding shots and it took me around about three hours. I got another five star review and $30 to my name. A week after that, another order came in and quite frankly, this one was a nightmare. The reason that this was such a nightmare is because I gave this guy unlimited revisions and I probably did around about four or five revisions until I had to tell this guy, look, my computer is literally dying, please, no more revisions, all right? Understandably, he was a bit upset and uh, he gave me a four star review, but it was all right because we made $55 this time. Now, okay, let me bring you back to YouTube because at this point, you know, I was still on and off uploading on my channel. And as almost like a passion project, I decided to upload my short-lived Fiverr experience of the free orders and I posted it and I remember the performance not being great at first. It was really below average, but later on in the story, this becomes a huge changing point in the story. Now this leads me on to September 2019 where I think I was just watching a YouTube video on how to improve your lighting and in my recommended, a video popped up by Peter McKinnon basically just going over his career as a product photographer. Slightly intrigued, I go, huh, I, I got a good camera. I mean, I'm a decent photographer. Let me try this out. And I kid you not, in the space of two weeks, this became my most lucrative service. I got my first sale on September 21st, 2018 for $95. And the best bit, 
I only had to take three photos. But once I got the products, I spent probably around two hours shuffling my lights around, trying to see if there was a good way to take these photos, and I eventually arrived on this extremely B-Tech looking setup. And my flawed thought process at the time was that, oh, I'll just, I'll just fix it in post. Bad idea. I mean, come on, come on, what is that? Somehow, it is honestly beyond me, but I got a five-star review for that, and I got the $95. It was also throughout this time that I saw the opportunity to specialize into Amazon product photography, which not only meant I could sell bundles of seven photos, but it also meant that per picture I was getting paid more as buyers would see me as specialized and therefore would trust me more and would more likely pay me money. The next two months, I made a total of $364. That was after the five or 20% fee. Now look, at this point in time, there's something I haven't been telling you. So when I originally created the product photography gig, I didn't have any of my own work to use. So uh, I used other people's work, work much better than I could ever dream of producing. So in early October, I had an order for $250, two color variations and eight photos either color. I did the usual, I spent a whole weekend planning, shooting, editing the photos on a Monday, I got them sent to her. A school day passes, I don't think much of it, but I go to check my phone again and I realize I've got a chargeback. I'm receiving calls from this lady. I pick up one of them and I get her screeching in my ear, basically just roasting me, saying how amateur I am, saying how bad my services were. Either way, I got a chargeback and a two star rating. And this moment right here marked the start of the end of the product photography days. But something else was on my mind and taking up my attention span, YouTube. So in the start of November, I started up a gaming channel which was originally intended to be a joke. I saw these Roblox promo code videos getting loads of views and as a bored 14 year old kid, I was like, hey, let's just make dumb videos. And there was no intent of making money there. It was just, it was, it was just whatever. This was until this joke somehow started getting me tens of thousands of views a day. And in early September of 2018, that exact channel got monetized, meaning I was earning money from it. And throughout this period on a good day, I'd maybe be making two to five dollars. And unsure with the future of this channel, I decided to look into drop shipping, e-commerce, and surprisingly enough, Instagram theme pages. After watching some Beheza videos, I was slightly intrigued by the idea of making money on Instagram, so I decided to start a few up. They weren't that good, I don't really have much experience, but one of these would later become known as the cat vibe. In February 2019, I released this video called How To Get Free Robux, where in short, I went over like some ways from like 2016, from some like old blog post. It was nothing special, it had been done a hundred times before, but it must have been my slightly misleading thumbnail or something like that, but this video absolutely blew up. And in the space of a week, it went from zero to 200,000 views. And this is where that channel really started to kick off. February, March and April seemed to breeze by and with YouTube ad revenue being the only source of income I had. February, I made $450. March, I made 700 and April was our first 1K month at $1,050. And at the end of April, this was around the time where I started doubling my upload consistency and I also started to take on sponsorships. Now, at the time, my videos were maybe getting 50 to 100,000 views a pop. And in my business email, I had these survey sites, which do actually work. They're just not that efficient. They were reaching out to me saying, hey, look, could you endorse our site for your viewers and say they can earn free Robux from it? And being new to this whole YouTube game, I didn't really know how much they were going to pay me. So I remember kind of just asking one, oh, what are your standard rates? I was expecting maybe, you know, 50 to $100 because, you know, that, that, that was probably what I was making off most of my videos in ad revenue. But this dude said $500, nearly 10 times what I expected him to say. And now checking back in with the theme pages, I'm just going to be brutally honest here. I kind of quit him. I had just got 2,000 followers on both accounts and I really wasn't seeing the engagement, I wasn't seeing the numbers yet and uh, being impatient I just decided to kind of let it go and I slowly just lost interest in it and stopped doing it. The following months, 
being brutally honest here, were literally just spent recycling the old free Robux content, making different thumbnails, adding different titles, and somehow it was still working because in May 2019, I hit 100,000 subscribers on that channel. Which is mad because I mean that was like a goal and a dream I had dreamed of for like five years beforehand. And on top of this, due to the introduction of the sponsorships, in May, June and July, I made a total of $10,000. May bringing in $2,000, June bringing in I think $3,500 and July being our most lucrative month of around $5,000. Mid-August, I had around 200,000 subscribers and was thinking to myself, you know, why don't I just create another channel doing the exact same stuff? So I did, and in the space of just over a month, at the end of September, not only was this new channel monetized, but it had 10,000 subscribers on itself. It was this time in September where I randomly remembered the old theme pages that I half started up, and I decided to change both my content and follow for follow strategy and pick one up again. And almost instantly, I started seeing results. I gained an extra 3,000 followers and gained 2 million impressions that month on my videos. Which for reposting content 5 minutes a day was kinda surreal. October, November and December passed and randomly my second channel decided to blow up. And in the space of a month it went from 20,000 subscribers to 100,000 subscribers. And literally nothing had changed on both channels and they were both doing the best that they had ever done. With September, November and December bringing a combined total of over $20,000. And it was in early December 2019 where that old Fiverr video I previously mentioned hit the algorithm and blew up after a year and a half of it being published. But I think probably the most incredible thing about this all was the amount of money that I got paid for the views I got. So typically on the gaming channels that I ran, I would maybe make a hundred to two hundred dollars if I got a hundred thousand views. But on this channel, I made a thousand dollars from the a hundred thousand views I got. That was kind of eye opening because I realized, oh, okay, this niche has a lot more money potential. Plus I enjoyed making them so much more than the stupid free Robux videos I was doing. So I decided to take up the opportunity and after a year of solid Solitude on the Jared West channel, I uploaded an updated Fiverr video. The new year of 2020 rolled around and January again, I topped the last month and it was an insane month for the channel. 3 million views combined on both of the free Robux channels. And it was in January of 2020 where I hit my first $10,000 month. And it was also in the month of January where I uploaded two more videos to the Jared West channel. One being about how to grow on Instagram and the other one being about my seven day dropshipping experience. And they both performed really underwhelming throughout this month and also my father video died out. So that meant on that channel I only made around about $100 that month. And also to add insult to injury, this was around the time where my Instagram theme page, which now had around about 50,000 followers, got taken down for copyright reasons. I'm not gonna get too detailed into it, but basically Lab Bible owned several pieces of content on my page, but I'm not gonna lie, this actually sucked so much because it had about 90% engagement, so I was getting around 40,000 likes a post, and I was getting around about 10 million impressions every single week. But like, here's where stuff starts to get ludicrous, because in the months of February, March, April of 2020, I made a combined total of over $40,000. And you may be asking yourself, was there any radical shifts that I made to earn this $40,000? Well, no. And that was almost the weirdest bit because literally nothing had changed. I was still making the same videos. I was still posting the same amount. The only thing that had slightly changed was the sponsorship prices and obviously the views I was getting. It felt undeserved. I had done nothing more, but I had made a significant amount of money more. Next month, I had huge plans to expand my channel, automate different channels I was gonna be cross-promoting, make my own app, make my own platform for the survey site. I was almost sure I could make this $10,000 a month, easily turn into 20, 30, 40, maybe even 50 a month, but it all came crumbling down on one Sunday afternoon. So my original Roblox channel with around about 750,000 subscribers overnight, got terminated. 
this actually run my second channel completely into the ground because as soon as this happened, I panicked and I assumed that it might have been a ban wave. So I went to my secondary channel, I deleted all of my videos off of there. Only problem is YouTube is so heavily momentum based that after uploading a video of all of my other videos gone, it got 10 times less views than it normally would and I was stuck with a channel getting maybe 10,000 views with nearly half a million subscribers. So May came around and financially it was a huge shift because I went from making around $10,000 a month down to making pff, barely a thousand. But the positive of this was that I now had the time and energy to invest my efforts and my energy into this channel right here. The first few weeks of May were a grind. On this channel, I had, I think, maybe 3,000 subscribers. I was getting maybe 500 to 1,000 views a video. I was on the brink of quitting multiple times, but you know, I just, but I had the knowledge of my other channels knowing that as soon as one video goes, you know, all the rest of my videos are gonna get picked up by the algorithm, noticed. And I was right because in late May, my how to grow on Instagram video started gaining huge traction. And by the end of June, I had got 10,000 subscribers. My other videos were now starting to get recommended and at this point in time, we're talking mid-June, mid-July, I was making around about 40 to $60 a day, which, you know, wasn't terrible, but I had my aspirations much higher. I then made the decision to transition my videos into more entrepreneur-based videos. And instead of just making your run-of-the-mill videos every week, just doing, oh, I tried this, I was trying to make them feel like a movie, feel like a documentary, if you will. And that leads me to where I am today, 50,000 subscribers, and I'm making around about 200 to $350 a day from this channel which is honestly ludicrous and uh i yeah i cannot thank all of you who watch and support my videos enough for that and i feel blessed to be in a position where i can say this but around a week ago we hit a net worth or a net total of a hundred thousand dollars in pre-tax money as a 16 year old but look if there's one thing that i want you to take away from this video is that money is not earned overnight if you yourself have clicked on this video with the intent to try and make money, the only way you're going to be doing that is by truly providing value. Unfortunately, there isn't this secret pill or this secret formula to try and make money. You have to put in the time, you have to graft, and you have to learn valuable skills, wherever that may be. Whether that be in marketing, video creation, music, whatever that may be, you need to produce valuable skills that people will be happy to pay you for. Instead of focusing on how can I make money, focus on how can I provide value to people. And in doing so, opportunities will come to you. They may be imperfect, they may be in unsuspecting packages. But if you just take on as much opportunities that you can and explore different regions, explore different fields, one day you'll be able to look back at yourself and go, I was such a dumbass back then. <laughs> and on that note, I hate to be this guy, but if at any point in this video you enjoyed it, please consider liking and or subscribing. I can promise you, your subscription box will not be spammed and they'll always be higher, if not the same quality as this video. Give it a shot. Yeah, I really appreciate it.